So the goals of treatment are really to stop the immune system from attacking the blood vessels. We want to reduce the inflammation. We want to kind of tell the immune system to quiet down and to stop attacking the blood vessels. We have, again, a wide range of medications, and those go from uh, medications that are, have various degrees of uh, of strength, uh, how strong the medication is, and of course, the more severe the disease, um, that is going to depend on which medications we, we choose depending on the type of the vasculitis. We want to save the patient's life. I know there are some, some questions later, but um, one, one of the concerns, of course, is that certain conditions such as ANCA vasculitis, uh, without treatment, there is a possibility of, of people losing their life if they are not treated. And so the first goal is we want to um, make sure that the patient's uh, life is protected. We want to prevent damage to tissues. We want to prevent that kidney damage. We want to prevent that lung damage. And we want to improve the quality of life. We want people to get back to doing things they enjoy doing um, and, and really bringing the quality of life back to where it was before that individual developed vasculitis. But the treatment of vasculitis is complicated, right? We have to consider uh, the, the, the risks of the vasculitis because vasculitis can damage organs. It can uh, take away people's quality of life. Um, if, if a person is spending time in the hospital, if a person is spending time in pain, if a person is spending time in the doctor's office, that's impacting their quality of life. We want to give treatment to help this. But then we also have to be understanding uh, that treatment carries its own risks, right? Treatment can cause um, an increased risk for infections. Prednisone has a lot of side effects. Depending on the medications, all of them have side effects. And so it's a delicate balance, balancing act with balancing the risks of the vasculitis, balancing the risks of the treatment, and what I tell patients is that at every doctor's visit, that is really what the visit is about. The doctor is assessing how is the vasculitis doing? Are there any risks from the treatment? Are there any complications from treatment? And kind of thinking about at every visit, do we need more treatment or less treatment or do we uh, stay the course? So again, when the vasculitis is newly diagnosed, we call that phase as being active, right? The patient is newly diagnosed. And the first thing we want to do is we want to put out the fire. We want to uh, stop that inflammation. We want to induce remission, meaning we want to quiet down that inflammation. And then once we've achieved remission, meaning once we've uh, brought that inflammation down, we want to maintain remission. So then we talk about remission maintenance, meaning we want to stop the disease from coming back. But sometimes we do encounter relapses or flares, the disease does recur. And so then we have to kind of start over and re-induce uh, remission. So these are kind of the phases of vasculitis. So I know perhaps uh, many individuals in the audience may have ANCA vasculitis. So you know that in ANCA vasculitis, we use prednisone quite a bit to treat um, to, to induce remission, often in combination with medications such as cytoxin or uh, rituximab. To maintain remission, we often use medications like methotrexate or azathioprine or mycophenolate, or now we are using more rituximab to keep the patient in remission. If there are relapses, we often have to start prednisone back on. And then again, depending on the type of relapse, we will um, use a combination or, or, or one of the medications listed here to kind of restart the cycle. Similarly, in giant cell arteritis, we give prednisone. In the last uh, two years or so, there has been more use of a newer medication called tocilizumab, which helps us to induce remission. We maintain remission with prednisone oftentimes and um, may use tocilizumab. And then, of course, again, if there are relapses, we treat um, with, with the same medications and restart that cycle. There are some common principles regarding treatment. We want to make sure everybody is following a healthy diet, staying physically active as much as possible. Again, 
with the medications, there is a higher risk of infection. And so we want to follow some common sense um, strategies to try to prevent from getting sick. And therefore, we want to try to avoid being around people who are sick. We want to be very careful with hand hygiene, either careful hand washing, using things like uh, hand sanitizer and so forth. If there are concerns of an infection, then to seek medical attention right away. It's important to try to prevent things that are preventable. So as you know, there are immunizations against influenza against pneumonia against shingles and now for shingles there is a newer vaccine called the shingrix which is uh, a vaccine that can also be used in people who are on immune suppressants when individuals are being treated for vasculitis we typically do not allow live vaccines to be administered there are not many of these uh, there was an older shingles vaccine which is often no longer used, but if it is a live vaccine, then we do not want our patients to receive that because their immune system is suppressed. We will often prescribe an antibiotic to prevent a rare form of pneumonia called pneumocystis. This is a form of fungal pneumonia. It's a fungus that can affect the lungs and cause a serious form of pneumonia. And so many of you may have heard or have been on a low dose of an antibiotic to prevent this form of pneumonia. As you know from glucocorticoids, from prednisone, there is a risk of bone thinning, and therefore we use medications to prevent uh, bone loss. So in vasculitis, once we make a diagnosis, uh, we uh, want to treat the disease, we want to prevent flares, and the main concern is that every time a patient has a flare, there is concern that that flare may be causing damage to the organs, whether that be the kidney, the lung, the skin, the nerve, and so forth. And so what can, we, what can be done to reduce uh, damage from vasculitis? The main important things are early diagnosis. So uh, any patient who there is concern for vasculitis, we want to try to get to a diagnosis as quickly as possible. We want to start treatment to shut off that fire, to turn off that inflammation and induce remission. Of course, follow up with um, providers is important, whether that's a rheumatologist or sometimes a team of doctors, lung doctor, kidney doctor, etc., because we want to try to minimize relapses or at least catch them early uh, before there is damage to internal organs. We want to also try to reduce damage that's related to medications, right? So as you know, prednisone uh, can cause a number of side effects. Other medications, all medications have side effects, and we want to balance that carefully um, with with your provider and that's one reason we do this uh, regular monitoring with lab tests is to monitor not just the disease but then to monitor uh, the medications and to monitor for side effects